Let's talk about my favorite new underwear brand, MeUndies. I love them. So soft, so comfortable, and perfect for lounging around or playing ball. Elevate your underwear game today to the next level with MeUndies. What is MeUndies? Oh, well, it's just a seriously soft, feel-good underwear delivered right to your door. MeUndies are designed in Los Angeles and made from sustainable source micro-model, a fabric three times softer than cotton. MeUndies comes in an ever-changing selection of classic colors, bold shades, and fun patterns so you can tailor your underwear to your own personal style. And guess what? You could save time and money each month with a monthly subscription. And if you're not ready for a subscription, that's okay. You could still save. That's because MeUndies is offering you 20% off your first pair. All right, 20% off. Just use our special URL, MeUndies.com slash Clippers, and get 20% off your first pair. So go ahead and revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. You want to have a good time? You got to wear a good underwear. And MeUndies is the best underwear out there. Once again, that's MeUndies.com slash Clippers. MeUndies.com slash Clippers. All right, coming up next on the I Am Rap Poor Stereo Podcast, I love this interview. I got to interview Austin Rivers of the Los Angeles Clippers, who's been playing in the NBA for five years, which tripped me out. He's 24 years old. Good kid. Great interview, as you remember. I interviewed his father, Doc Rivers. He was a great interview also. So this is the first ever father and son combination that have been on the Iron Rapport Stereo podcast. I love this kid. This interview's dope. He was dope, and I'm really proud of it. This is Austin Rivers, five-year NBA veteran, former Duke Blue Devil, current L.A. Clipper on the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Gamertag Radio is headed to E3 2017. E3 is one of the biggest events for Gamertag Radio, and you don't want to miss this. Join host Danny Pena, Paris Lilly, and Peter Toledo direct from the convention center floor. What are the plans for Microsoft? We're going to see more new titles from Sony PlayStation. And how about Nintendo? Interviews, roundtable discussions, reviews, hand-on impressions, and more. E3 2017 coverage on Gamertag Radio. June 11th through the 15th. Gamertagradio.com or play.it forward slash Gamertag. Check one two. You, you you like hip hop, right, Austin? I love hip hop. So you got to grab the mic, like you know, you know, you. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you, no, you, it's like I'm about to spit some bars on here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You, so so uh. So I do want to go on sway in the morning this summer. And and spit freestyle. You got yeah. spit? No, for real. You want me to beatbox for you? No, like, no, no, Like no, some no, slow no, right no, now? No, 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 no. Like no. I know it's basketball season, but it gets <laughs> no, spit no, season year I'm round. Focus, I'm focused. I'm focused. Focus. But you think you would be adequate to go? You'd be comfortable with the five fingers of death? I could do that. Word. I could do that. Yeah, no doubt. But even if I get like a little, <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't working with. It. <laughs> you need something. You need something yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, who yeah. who are your dudes? Who are your dudes? You, like, what what's the last record you you downloaded? Um, well, I like Kendrick's been releasing some singles as of lately. Okay. Uh, he had that humble uh, a couple of days ago. It's pretty good. Um, obviously Drake had the more life. Right. Um, which is you know a pop rap mix. Right. Uh, right. Uh, right now, there, it's a lot of it, a lot of singles. Uh, as far as albums, I don't know if you listen to, like trap music. There's yeah, a difference, yeah, you know. Yeah. You got Kodak Black. This yeah. came out an album, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so I listen to a little bit of everything. I listen to top to bottom. You know, it doesn't really matter for me. If you said like, you know, this is like the, the obligatory top five question. If top five MCs, who's your 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 favorite today? I know it's interchangeable, but if you said yeah, yeah, your yeah. top five of MCs, all time, or, of all time, and it's just today, dead or alive. Dead, let's say let's say alive. God bless the dead. Let's say alive. Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I feel like Tupac and Biggie, you know, their bodies of work were so short. See, that's a, that's what I would say. I wouldn't put them in my top five respectfully, just because I didn't grow up one in the era of listening to all their music. I do know a lot of their music, right. but I, I can only go off of. Uh, it's like if someone said my top five basketball players, you know, That's the next I, I question. couldn't put Bill Russell, even though most people should put him in there. And Kareem, I just didn't grow up watching them. You know what I mean? So I have to go off who I watched and who I thought. So my top five would probably raise some eyebrows, but it'd be who I grew up watching. OK, well, we'll I'm going to get into that because I'm with you on that, on the, okay. on, the, on the NBA. But like and listen, there's no judging your top five embassies, let's say alive. And and um, because out of respect, okay. because I again, I think Biggie and, and Tupac, their careers were. I mean, their impact was incredible. But the careers were so short. Okay. So alive, non-judgmental. Are you 24 years old? Yes. You're 24 years old. Yes. I'm offended. Why? 
because you're 24 years old. You're a grizzled <laughs> NBA vet. <laughs> no. What's with the What's with the beard? You're 24 years old. What are I'm, you trying to look like? This, like you're 40. No, I, I think this makes me like a little bit older, a little bit more mature. A little bit older. It doesn't. I don't make you get carded. I don't get carded if I go in the bar with this. Now. I'm going to tell you what it makes you look like, Austin. It makes you look lazy, like you don't want to shave. Because, <laughs> like, if you didn't have, I mean, I get that you. I've got nothing but compliments. You're the first one. In no, I'm not saying you don't look fine. You look fine. You look cool. I'm just saying, like, I don't know, like, you, if you're 24, like, in, I'm 47. I just turned 47. Okay. Okay. I know you're like surprised. You're like, oh, Mike, I thought you looked 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, exactly. I, what I, I, I can read mind. your eyes yeah, by saying that's that. That's exactly. What but I was I'm thinking. saying, enjoy being 24. I'm just a fit because 24 is so long ago. All right, let's keep this on you, Austin Rivers. <laughs> Top five MCs. Um. Number one, I would go Jay Z. Okay. Uh, oh. Number two, I'm going Andre 3000. Okay. Uh, three, he's still alive. I'm going. I'm going Eminem. Gotta say that. Uh, four, this is where it gets tricky. Um, see, because then it's like, who do I like listening to the most, or who's like the most lyrical? It's it's your top five. There's Lil no Wayne, judgment. Lil Wayne, Lil, Lil okay, Wayne would be number okay, four. Okay. Lil Wayne would be number four. Showing your youth, but go ahead. That's cool. Uh, I mean, his old stuff. I his, got you. No, I got you. I got you. You're 24 crazy. with a beard. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, four would be Lil Wayne. Five. Um, I'm just gonna go with someone I I, I liked, you know, listening to growing up. I liked. Uh, I, I would go with Kanye West. Okay. Yeah. I'm not gonna argue with this. I'm not gonna yeah. argue with this. So if I said your top five, if you were making your all-NBA team, your top five, to go into that, like, again, because I'm with you on this. I personally think that if Brian Scalabrini played in the 60s, there would be the Brian Scalabrini Award. <laughs> okay? Like, I, I think DeAndre Jordan would average 60 yeah. and 40. Uh. Okay. I'm, I'm totally with you on that. I've heard you talk about yeah, this before. Yeah, it's just different eras of basketball. It's different yeah, eras yeah. of basketball, and it's the evolution of man. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And it's so controversial absolutely. to say this. Because it, it rubs, it rubs um, people who are older the wrong way because they're like, you know, they feel offended because they feel like if they had our technology, our way of training, that they could have done the same things, but they weren't able to. And that's why you can't compare – I can't compare, you know, guys, you know, uh, the, the Will Chamberlain's ability. Because if they play in this era, I don't know how. It, it, it's, it's, and it's the same thing. It might be 10, 20 years from now. I, I, right. I don't know. You know what I mean? So that's just the way it is. Um, you can only control. They, can't, they have no control over uh, the era they're, they're brought up in. But they dominated the era that they were given with. Um, but if I had to go my all five. Your, your five. It could be uh, your favorite. Like, you know, it like could, my, it, it, it's just, again, it's just a Tuesday. It could change. On Friday, it could change, obviously. Top five. Um, the world is coming to an end. The only way we can defeat okay. them. Well, Michael's one, obviously. Michael, I, what's his last name? Yeah, Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, you've heard of him. Okay, Jordan. Okay. Um, That's right. He played you for get the Bulls. Crucified if he's not one. I know. I, I, I know you do get crucified. Yeah. I don't put him in my top. That's, a, that's, a, that's ridiculous. Well, well, this is my top. I'll do my top after it, Austin. Okay. I'm not saying he's not the best. He is the best. It's not a, it's not a I, question. I get that. Okay. I get that. Michael won. Um, see me personally, I, I'm going Kobe too. I, I'm, I'm a huge. I like. So Kobe. where's Kobe at the two guard? Michael's uh, playing the three. Oh, I have to put a starting lineup. You get, what, oh, what do we think th- we're doing this? I thought like, you said wait, top five, like rappers. Like you said. Okay, top, okay, oh. all right. Yeah, do your top five. Stick, stick stay on the stage. Okay, I, I, I go Michael, Kobe. Uh, you know, it's tough to say this because I'm still playing against the guy. Okay, uh, but LeBron, you got to put him top five. Yeah, he's, man. he's he's uh, what he's been able to do uh, is, is is amazing. Okay, um, Tim Duncan. Is in there. He'd be he'd be four. Okay. Um, five would be um, as far as just dominating the game. Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, he 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 was incredible. You didn't uh, play. You, you were you in the league with Shaq? Was in there? Um, I might have been my rookie year. He might have been his last. He year. was chilling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but that's when he was just you know kind of just being a veteran, hanging around. Okay. He wasn't like you know Shaq Shaq. Uh, yeah. As far as the starting lineup, if I'm going the starting lineup uh, at the one. My all NBA team would be. Um, I'm going to go with John Stockton at the one. Okay, no problem go with that. John Stockton one. I go Mike at the two. Okay. LeBron at the three. All right. Um, I'd go with Dirk at the four because mm. uh, he needs shooting. Okay. Um, and at the five, I I, I would go with Shaquille O'Neal. I, I'm not going to argue with you. All right. UNC won the title last night. You're a Duke guy. Did it still sting? Is right. that just like in your DNA? No, it's really not because I almost went to Carolina. I mean, half of us almost went to the other school. Mm-hmm. It's just once you go there, then like that's that's where you got to be. Lines are drawn. And now it's like you know because most of the fans are from North Carolina and they take it like really seriously. I have from from Florida. I, I really know nothing about the rivalry. When I 
narrowed it down to school. It was Kansas, Duke, Carolina. Those are three schools and Florida. And, you know, I chose one that I felt was best for me, and I, and, and I love Duke, but that's... Coach K, Coach Rivers, who's got the more uh, annoying scream, oh, squeal? Coach Rivers, man. That, his, his uh, I, I call him Pops or Doc, you know, one of the two. That's but but his, who, yeah. who, who you like, we like, you just want to go... Coach K doesn't, Coach K will, like, yell. I know you've heard, everybody knows Doc's rasp. The raspy voice. Is it? But like, okay, it's, it's that all the time. But is it? Is it like that? Like in the house, like all the time? Like, can you just ever like? No, I was more scared of my mom. I grew up with my. I grew up with my mom. Okay. Because he was in Boston. But just as a coach, like, do do you like just Coach K, Doc Rivers? Do you, who do you just want to be like? Shut the fuck up! Like, like just it's just you and me listening. Like, if you ever could say that, to, just a coach, not the father, but like just like in terms of shut the fuck up. Everybody wants to say it. Yeah, I mean, I, you I, might I, want to say it to me right now, Austin. And you can do it. Feel free to do it. <laughs> okay, but I'm just saying, just as a coach, who would you want to go? Just bring it down, zip it. I think I, I had those moments in college. I had those moments in high school. Ninety nine percent of the time, you just tell yourself it's not a good idea. You know, you right. just, you just, you know, it's right. never a good. It's really never. It's never a win. I've never done it. And it's worked out, you know. I, so, right. <laughs> it, it, so it's it never works out that way. It, it never works, works out. It's never where you a good say thing. It, the coach is like, "You're right. I'll shut the fuck up." It just, <laughs> it, it just doesn't happen. So right. I don't even go there. Even at any level, that's never no, gonna no, work. no, no, no. You could be uh, elementary. If you it do, just, it's not gonna work out. It's for you. never gonna work <laughs> no, out. No, no, right. no, no. All right, all right. Fair enough. All right. So you, uh, rumor has it. At 24 years old, a grizzled veteran with a beard. Don't you just, call me a grizzled veteran. 24 with I'm a beard. I'm not even in my prime yet. I, I know you're not even in your prime, but you, you want to, like, it seems like you want to be looked at as grizzled. You got no, the beard. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. You just got your first crib? Second. Second crib? Yes. So now you have multiple cribs. Well, I have the Orlando. Okay. Tax reasons. Ah. Yeah. I got you because you still have the residence there. Exactly. I got wink, you. Wink. I got you. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so, so how does that feel like, you know, to be a 24-year-old man, young man, you know, like to, to afford yourself? Like, you, like for me, uh, like I grew up wanting to be an NBA player, like to, to you know, and I, I obviously my, my life took, I was blessed with other, another path, but like to like have your dreams manifest themselves. Yeah, um, well, you know, it's crazy because I have a most, obviously everybody knows I have a different background than 99% than of people in the league. Mm -hmm. You know, you have me, Seth, Steph. Um, Clay. Clay, um, trying big dog son. It, it's it's really hard because you grow up with stuff. You know, there's things that you have access to. So a, I, I grew up in a nice neighborhood, obviously. Right. So I, I most kids, 90, I, I, I talk to them all the time. Uh, you know, they they uh, they're, they're trying to figure out what they want to do now because their whole life they've they've had no motivation, or, right. or you know, they just kind of you know live off their parents. They go to college, it's paid for, they have fun, and they come back and like, all right, now what? Right. Uh, I was just never like that. I saw what he had, what my father had, and I was like, I want this for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of, and I think that's what all these other players do. They're like, man, I want, I want to do what you do. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to live off you. I don't want, I, I want to do exactly what you do. Um, and, you know, I told myself when I go to Duke, you know, you're not going to have to pay, after high school, you're not going to have to pay for me no more. I'm mm -hmm. going to college for free. And, you know, that's it. And that's kind of just little things like that amongst other things. Um, were always trips on my shoulder and um, it always motivated me to get to where I'm at now and it feels great. Um, especially because the path wasn't easy. People think it is. Um, you know, people all think like all of us, the guys who did have our father, think it was, it's the same thing. You know, we, at the end of the day, our, it doesn't matter who our father is. When we're on the court, we're by ourselves. Right. You know what I mean? Whether I play with my dad or in a couple of years if I'm not with my dad or right. if I'm not, when I wasn't, it doesn't matter. It, it, then the day's on the sideline. They can't do nothing to help me. So it's like, it's it's every man for themselves out there. All you have is your teammates. And, and and I always think of it like you know if you're if you're playing ball with real ballers and you know at the, inevitably you know when you're playing ball, especially coming up, you you know when the competition ain't going to be you know in the sweet spot. It's going to yeah. be in the hood. Inevitably, you're going to wind up in a gym where they're like, oh, I'm a bust. I'm a bust. Doc the, Rivers I grew, ass. I grew up playing basketball. In those areas. That's all that's, I was at. There's that's no all good, I was at. That's where you I, I have was to never go. in. I'm from a town, Winter Park. I love it. That's where I have my house at. Okay. I, I go back in the summertime. It's super quiet there. Shout out to everybody in Winter Park. I would go back there. That's where I go back and relax. Growing up there, I don't think I played. I never played there. Because, I would train there by myself. Right. Like, I'd go to gyms in Winter Park. When I went to go play pickup until I got older where I organized the pickup to where, you know, they'd come to where I was at and play. Mm -hmm. Growing up, I went to this place called the Smith Center, which is, you know, in a 
di- you know, a, a, a different type of neighborhood. Put it's it that in way. the hood. It's in exactly. And I would go. I would go over there. I would go over the hood and play. That's where all my friends are from. My best friends from the hood. Uh, that my family illegally. I mean, I meant legally adopted. You know, we adopted him because you know okay. he was going through some stuff. Um, we would go over in his neighborhood or go over uh, uh, downtown. You know, rougher areas. That, that's where I played. And grew up and played. You had to. Because that, that's, that's where all the hoopers at. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I would go there, and you could imagine me walking in there. I, they would come at me, especially when I got a name for myself when I was right. in high school and I got ranked high. And all. Right. It was that, I would love to go there cause, just because of that. Right. And it put, it put that little chip on, you know, like, again, another chip. You know, I had that's, that's kind of how I was. And I still am that way. I hear you. It. And, and, and I, if I, you know, I, I could see it, especially like this year, you know, and I've watched a lot of Clippers games this year. Like, you play with a chip on your shoulder. Absolutely. You play with a scrappiness. And, you you know, and I, I think it's such a misconception that anybody in the NBA had anything handed to them. As if, uh, I mean, as that's, if they're not going to. You got to understand, people who don't have what you have are going to be salt. That's just the way. You know, I always look at it now. Like, before, when I was in the league, my first couple of years in the league, I struggled. Right. I, I was hurt a lot, too. It was just, it just wasn't working out. Right. right? Um, so, and I was a lottery pick. So, people loved it. They, uh, write me off. You know, right, right then and there. Then you got to look at it. Okay, now he goes and plays for his dad. So all of this right now is a perfect combination right. for easy pickings, you know, right. for people just to make fun. Right. And I knew that going to this team. Right. I knew that. And it was going to be – I either had to really play well to where now people can't say anything. Right. Or if I didn't play well, they're going to crucify me right. even more. So I took that risk. I had no problem with that. Right. Um, because if they were going to give me an opportunity, because at the time they didn't have a backup guard – so I looked at it as not, I don't care who the coach is or who this, I looked at, at that moment, all I was looking at is a position to actually play. Um, and if they were going to give me an opportunity to play, now I can bet on myself, mm-hmm. then I'll take those odds. I always bet on myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I'm at the point three years later where people can't say anything anymore. If you say something now, that just means you just don't like me, right. uh, which is fine because everybody, you're never, you're not going to be liked by everybody or you, 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 you're, you're salty about something. You can't honestly, back like three years ago when you said something about my game, you actually had credit behind your words because I wasn't playing well. Right. It's like if someone went on, and I know this is an extreme example because this guy's the best player, arguably the best player in the league right now. If someone said, Russell Westbrook sucks, you'd be like, no, no he doesn't. I mean, right. come on, you just don't like him. You right. know what I mean? I'm getting to the, I want to continue to get to the point where if someone says that, people are like, no, he doesn't. You just don't like him. You don't like that he works with his dad. But at the end of the day, I'm out there doing stuff every night. Um, and that's, that's the chip I have on my shoulder. And I want to continue to build that, whether I play for my dad or not. Four years down the line from now, I'm, I'll always carry that. Yeah, I, I have goals of I want to be an all-star one day. I want to be all those things. Even if when I achieve those things that I believe I will, I'll still have that because that's just what it is. You right. know what I mean? And that's just the way I was – I was raised. That's kind of like one of my motivating things, and I like it. It helps me play with that chip. And, um, you know, that's the same thing. And I, it's funny when I came in the league, especially with other players, like, oh, you, you know, Dax, you know, you know, that's when I first came in the league, I didn't earn my stripes yet. That was the main thing players would talk trash to me. And it was so funny to me because I'd be like, you guys do know that when you have kids, they're going to go, you're, you're, you're stereotype. You're talking trash to me, and your kids are going to get – so you're basically talking trash to your kid because they're mm-hmm. going to go through the same thing because their dad was an NBA player. Who, who was the biggest trash talker when you came in the league? Like, who, like you know, like, I'm, I, they either may be in the league or not. Like, when you first came in, what, four or five years ago? Is, it, is this your fifth year? Yeah, it's my fifth year. That's incredible. Yeah. Fifth year. So, like, who do you remember your rookie year that was, like – Rookie year. That you had to show out to. Like, you had to, like, you know, play – I've always got into it. Well, we, we've always me, – me and um, – DeMarcus Cousins was, was always talking to me. And it was never disrespectful or anything but like that. But you guys are like the same. He's a little older than no, you? No, no, he's way Yeah, he's like four years older than me. I think okay. he's like three or four years older okay. than me. I think he's... Um, he likes to talk? DeMarcus? <laughs> Come on, man. I, yeah. I, yo, you know, <laughs> I, I, I call him... They call him Boogie Cousins. Yeah. Me personally, I think he should be renamed Big Baby Cousins because if you're that big and you're that talented, you shouldn't be whining and complaining so much. That's my own personal opinion. That's not awesome I'm not, saying that. Yeah, I'm not commenting on that. I'm not going to I think he's the new big baby in, in the league and with all that talent. So he was a talker. And when you yeah, first no, came, just, I mean, but he wasn't – there was many guys. I mean, I, I played against um, – I mean, uh, you know, it's crazy. It's KG. With, when I, play, I played against KG a couple of times, he would talk. Uh, again, it's, it's harmless stuff. It's right. all like you are know. You a, are you a shit talker? No, 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 not really, not really. I mean, if, if someone's getting into me, then yeah, and then. But you're I, not a, a shit talking I, I don't starter. Just go in the, I don't go in the court and just start talking shit. You know right. what I mean? I, if I do, I'm saying stuff to myself. Like you know, I'll say something out loud to the crowd. I'm not gonna go to players. I just don't care enough to, 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 uh, about that player to say something to him. I'm more focused on like the team aspect and 
that's not anything against anybody who does do that, but that's just not my thing. I got you. Um, you know, uh, th- th- there's a lot of players that talk, though. You know, I think, I mean, DJ talks. You know, DJ's one of the guys that He's, talk. You know, okay. DJ's that talk. But it's like there's different type of – there's some guys who will talk, and it's like pers- – like they'll say stuff, they're like, all right, you you might start a fight saying something like that. And then there's guys who like – are really good at competitive trash talk that makes it more fun. I got you. You know like, what I mean? Like Gary that's Payton what KG was. Like, Kate, okay. KG was a competitive, competitive trash talker to where he made the game even more competitive. Right. And I think that's what sparked his. I mean, he's probably one of the most competitive players to ever play right. sports. Right. You know, let alone basketball. Right. Uh, and I think he was great at that. Okay. Gary Payne, I think, was – I didn't obviously get to play against someone like him. Um, I've heard he's like a competitive trash talker. Yeah. I, it I, wasn't personal. No, I'm saying, I think that's the difference between – with social media, now you have access to more people's personal stuff. Right. It's a lot more different now. I right. think back when Michael and Charles and all those guys used to talk, and Patrick, you all those all that talk was strictly competitive. Right. Uh, and it made them, like, you know, want to go at each other because they're all friends now. So right. that's how you know it wasn't ever personal. Right. Where today – you know, you got guys saying stuff to each other, and then off the court, they don't like each other. Well, right. like, the only reason that would happen is if they said something personal on the right. floor. Right, right. Um, so it's just a different era of trash talk now. And that's why I don't really get into that, because if someone got me upset, I might say something, because I know so much about it. Everybody knows so much about each other now. Right. So I, I, I choose not to even go down that lane. What, what, I mean, you, the thing that, you know, your, your father grew up in an era where there was no social media. No. You know, like you met guys, you competed with guys. Literally, the first time you would meet them yeah. would be on the court. Yeah. <clears throat> and now, I'm calling it, I actually uh, patent this term. You, 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 you might get a kick out of this. Um, I call it the skinny genification of the NBA, <laughs> where dunks that don't go uh, in are celebrated, okay? <laughs> where where, where missed dunks are celebrated and this sort of thing. I mean, you know, and you have that yeah. in your DNA, that old school thing, just, just by, you know, being around it. Yeah. What do you think the, the future is? You know, you've had guys beefing on Twitter. Yeah, it's, that's correct. I, and that's... I've had I've had moments where I've almost had that where right. I, there's been players who have said something. Even I I'll watch TV and I'll, or I'll watch a game and then I'll you know just be on the internet and I'll see somebody say something else about another player, and I sometimes I, I hold back like I want to tweet like bro you don't even like just shut up like just play right. like like right. some dudes are why are you talking about somebody else playing right now like right. just go play like I can't stand when guys when other players when, do it I can't stand when other players are talking about other players like what right. what are you doing right now like right. or when other players are mad at someone free agency is the worst. Can't believe it. if if he get that tweet if he gets paid then I'm getting it. Like why are you worried about someone else? If if you're that good then you'll get paid. You know right. what I mean? Like I don't ever worry about when someone else gets paid. Like hey man, congrats. Like right. He he had to do something to earn the money. Whether right. he's overpaid or not, right. Somebody thought he was worth that amount, so right. he did something right. Like I I don't get into that. Sure, I feel like there's certain guys who are, are paid way way too much, but that's that's. We're not talking about Mike Conley here. We're not saying that oh Mike Conley gosh. shouldn't be the highest paid player in the oh NBA. I did, and you weren't making any <laughs> oh hand signals God. with me about that? I actually love Mike Conley, he's by a the great, way. He's a very good player, I and I can he's tell really he's good a good player. dude. He's another dude. His father as it was a professional yeah. athlete. And, Mike, and Mike, Michael's a beast, though. Don't get it. Mike, Michael's, Michael's a really good player. He's a really good player, okay? There's a lot of really good players in the NBA. The fact that he, right now, is at the top, I thought was bugged out. I'm just a fan. Yeah, but okay, you, I can't but go you do know it's all about the market of like they weren't Memphis wasn't gonna get big time like you know, no like Kevin Durant, they're not looking to go to Memphis. You I know what I mean? You. So when they get one, if they get a pretty you know, a really good player in Mike, you know, if they get a good player, they have to overpay to keep them. It's the same thing Milwaukee or mm. or the, the lower market teams mm. are, are gonna have those teams you'll always see they're going to have to stretch that dollar because they're not going to get the big, you know, big name players. No, one, one thing I don't understand about this market thing, obviously LA and New York, like they're, they're epicenters of the world. Yeah, you yeah. know, arguably the greatest cities you could throw Chicago in there. Boston. The, is, mm, the market's not as big you, as those you, other you places. You know where I'm from, Austin. You, for you to say Boston to me. You're, no, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm I not only it. the market, but no, the, the franchises you. there of are course. so big. You got, you know, the, the Patriots. I mean, every franchise there is, is sports, so... But, but but you know this whole thing about the markets, you know, like what like is it is it for the play from the players' point of view? Is it like endorsements or is it's, it like just it's, like the way of living? Like oh, I get to live in L.A. or I get I to live in it's Boston. A, a giant like pot of all that. I mean, all right, put it this way: say you uh, you play for um, the Knicks. Uh, no no no. Say you play for uh, Milwaukee or Toronto. Right. And Toronto's, that a, Toronto's a great city, by the way. It's underrated. Uh, uh, very underrated city, but it's just it's not in the United States. Yes. So, uh, you know, you, you go there and 
you're, you're just not as out there as much. Right. So, you know, you got to look at it as a player. Every player thinks, man, you know, obviously I have my window, right? They're like, man, I'm, I'm killing it, man. But, you know, this guy is always on, you know, TV or, mm. you know, always, you know, and everybody wants to do well and be seen and mm-hmm. all these things. They're like, man, you, you look at guys that play for the Lakers who aren't doing as half as what this guy's doing, but he has a commercial. I see. He, he has this and their games are all on TNT and my friends can't even watch me because they don't have, you I know see. what I mean? Like, so it's, it's, it's definitely fun to play on a big market team. You, you, you're, you're always on TNT and ESPN and you, your name's out there a little bit more, which would makes actually puts – you know, a bigger name behind you. And, I got and then, you. You know, next thing you know, people might look at you as a bigger time player. You might get paid more. You might get paid. It's, a, it's like a tr- trickle effect. And I think that's why a lot of players are always, especially the lower market teams, are always concerned when they get a big player. Like, man, is he going to leave and go to a big market? I understand. Um, and that's part of the reason why I think they sometimes deny trades because they don't want the, the, the league to just be, uh, you, know, n- you know, not spread out anymore. He's close. But, I mean, guys like – Kevin Durant and, and, and Russell and OKC and even Kyrie before LeBron and now LeBron in Cleveland, where you never would have thought would be the basketball center of the world. I mean, it, it goes through phases, but I, I guess I yeah, get and if, if, if And that's where, if you're I mean, that level honest, of a player. Let's be honest, who the fuck wants to really live in, 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 in OKC? I mean, I don't want to live in OKC. Yeah, I, mean, I, it, <laughs> I, heard, I heard in OKC, like a place to hang out is the YMCA. I'm not confirming or denying it, but I heard like that's like a jump off spot. Like that's like uh, something you do is like we're going to go chill at the YMCA. You know what's crazy about shout that? Shout out to the YMCA. Yeah, they, yeah, it's shout it's out to the great OKC place, YMCA, man. But I, I mean, like I'm not hanging out at the YMCA. If things no, no, are bad, if that's a spot to hang yeah, out. Yeah, not at all. You know what's crazy is there are different levels. If you're that level of a player, the Kevin, it doesn't matter where you go. Right. What's Westbrook's in OKC and his, his you, you can't go on Instagram for five minutes without seeing something he's right. doing or what clothes but he's wearing. But they did that, though. The, him and KD did that. Yeah, absolutely. Right? They, they created that for themselves. That's my point. I mean, the real – LeBron's in Cleveland. When LeBron wasn't in Cleveland, the, the, who was watching Cleveland? You know, no, no one even – now Cleveland – Call it the like, land. Some call it the wasteland. Now, they, yeah, people, now people are like, you know, oh, Cleveland. Cleveland's coming to town. Right. Like, games are sold out. I mean, it's like because LeBron James. LeBron James could go to any team in the league and the market – uh, the business around uh, the town, you. everything's going up. I, I mean, he's you. one of the, one in a generation type player. I got you. So I think those level of players it really doesn't matter. But for the average player, um, they definitely think I think about market. Um, I think most importantly, bottom line, the NBA is all situation. I think it's all. I think there's players who are drafted. I think more importantly, the the first three or four years in your league are all situation. After that, you are who you are, and then you can go anywhere and and you know you'll be able to fit in because you're, you know, you've, you're comfortable with the NBA and you're, you've already set out what type of player you are. I think the success is all first couple of years in the league is all situation. I think based on where you are. Absolutely. Type. There's guys right now, their rookie year who are playing well and there's somewhere other guys who aren't playing bad, but aren't playing as well, or mm-hmm. maybe not playing, but they're just not in a good. And a couple of years from now, they'll have a better career. They'll be, they'll be better players. I got you. I, I see it all the time. It happened my rookie year. Dude, my rookie and sophomore year, I wasn't invited to one rookie and sophomore All-Star game. I, I've said that a million times in interviews because, it, it, that, like I said, I played that. That, till this day, I was like, man, I know it's such a small thing, but as a competitor, that's who they chose were the best players of my class and for the rookie and sophomore game. That's who they said were better than me, all those guys. Like, half, half of those guys aren't in the league no more. I got you. You know what I mean? So that's where I don't even look at if you guys had a – now, obviously, if he's like a – Joel Embiid, like averaging 20, that's different. I mean, that mm. guy's like a star. But, you know, there's guys right now who are having okay rookie years that I can see a couple years from now being like really good players. Right. Like Brandon, I like Brandon Ingram from the Lakers. Mm-hmm. I think people are obviously, he's a number two pick and he's in big market. So people are a little harsh on him, you know, whatever, whatever. I think he has, his potential is crazy. Why don't, um, why don't you, you're here in L.A., he's a young guy. Why don't we take this kid to McDonald's and fatten him up a little bit? Because that's that's thing number one with him. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, he definitely has to get some weight. Um, but that's that's it's so hard to do. Like, uh, I do think you know you have to make realistic goals as far as him with weight. Like, I think this summer ten pounds would be right. You know, obviously people be like, oh, he needs to gain twenty. He's not. Gonna he's gain, always going to be a thin exactly. guy. Exactly. He's, he's not going to gain. Kevin Durant's not going to gain thirty pounds. Right. That, Even every, Garnett, you look at him exactly, at forty. He's exactly. Just, if you're basketball strong, that's all you need to be. You know, basketball strong different than muscle. You know what I mean? Like, it's like a different type of... I'll tell you, like, um, who's a guy that you wouldn't think is so strong, but thin. it's just... Who? Who's thin, who's extremely strong. Not me. You don't have to say me. Who else? Yeah, besides Like, you. besides Michael um, Rapport, who else? Um, you know, honestly, Kevin was one of those guys. Right. He Ke- was... Ke- Kevin was, was a thin, you know, dude, but he was strong. And he was really thin when he, when he was also, young. Absolutely. I think there's a lot of guys like that, though, who are, you know, 
they're wiry strong. Right. Um, and I think that's where I think that's where Brandon could get. I like the kid from Boston. Uh, um, or the guy from the Boston. Call him kid. I'm like two years older. What's his name? Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is. Uh, yeah. Man, he's gonna be good. I like Jalen. I like the kid from. I like the other guy. I like the guy from. Um, I keep calling him kids, and these guys are like two years younger than me. That's what I'm saying. But it's the beard it's the got beard. you confused. Got you don't know really what's going on right now. now. I'm like feeling my, tw- my you, age right now. Are you 24 now. this year? Like, yeah, when, I'm 24 when, right now. When did you turn 24? Uh, August. I, I, you know, I'm a, I am wouldn't do it. And I think that the ramification would be, I just want to smack the shit out of you. You're 24 years old. You've been playing in the NBA for five years. That is... That, you know that you that's a fucking that's so dope. <laughs> that's just so dope. I appreciate it, man. Okay. Thank you. Who who do you see coming out of college in the tournament? You must have watched it. That was impressive. Who do you think's gonna who who's gonna be the rookies next year that you think are man, gonna this, really you know, do something? Every year they're like pumping up a draft class. I know. Every year pumping they do it. it. They're, pumping they're, it, pumping the best, it. And it's never that good. Never. I, I, and that's the thing. They they overhype these these rookies, and then half of them never pan. I mean, it's just like it's ridiculous. This the year, though, I will give them this. This is a really talented draft. Okay. I, and I haven't seen one like this in a while. Um, uh, Al- uh, Alonzo Ball is, is, is really good. Okay. Um, well, you, you, you think he's going to be I, impactful? I think, he's, I think he's absolutely. His, his fit, and it's not so much his, um, his talent because he's extremely talented. Uh, his feel for the game is, is, is unmatched at the college level, and he's only a freshman. Seeing the way he, he plays the game, he plays the game like he's been – uh, in the NBA for like four, I and mean, he has that like type of you never see him riled up. He plays mm-hmm. at a good pace. He mm-hmm. knows how. To, the rare thing is he knows how to pass. Mm-hmm. I mean, usually guys know how to score first, mm-hmm. and then they learn how to get your team. Like that's that's who I am. Yeah. I'm a score figuring out way. Like he's already a passer, mm-hmm. uh, and um, I think he needs to learn how to score more. You know, okay. but, but, I mean, everybody, especially in this day in the NBA, right? Yeah, you, you gotta, if you're a guard, you got to be a scoring guard, um, and you got to be able to shoot, right? You know, unless you're just some freakish athlete, right? Um, and, but uh, you, you, and let me ask you, staying on, staying on Lonzo, you, your father obviously was yeah. who he was. This guy's got a father who thinks he's more famous, thinks he's more important. He doesn't. He doesn't. What is, what is your take he on doesn't. LeVar Ball? He does. He knows. He, uh, if you asked LeVar. You think he's just a great hype man? He's I like Ringling I think, Brothers? You know like, I think he honestly, man, is just having fun with it. And, you know, there's guys. The thing is, like, I grew up with players whose dads were just like that. Their just son was never LeVar. I mean, uh, it was a lot, you know, it was I a position. Uh, people are like, you know, he's, you know, he's taken away from his kid. And, I got you. You know, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But he, for one, it's at least he, he loves his son. And he thinks Absolutely. he's going to be great. So that's number one. Like, I'd rather have a dad like that. I got than you. some dad is like just always kind of jealous that his son's better than him and kind of always, you know, you know, shitting on him. Like, that's he's not doing any of those things. So do at least you, he's doing that. Do you think that he's put an X on his back by like? Absolutely. He's absolutely, he has put his, he's put a different, uh, the target was going to be there anyways because Alonzo's done that himself because he's a great player, which right. is a good thing. It has enhanced due to you know his his you know his dad talking but at the same time we all know his son, his son hasn't done anything wrong like he hasn't said anything crazy you know what i mean it's, and it's it, his dad really hasn't it, it, yeah can i beat michael that's crazy you know michael jordan but it, he, honestly he's probably been this and that's that i you know i was one of the people like man why is he talking so much yet until i saw alonzo say dude he's been this way since he was so once like if that's who he is, it doesn't even matter. Like he's just doing it to have fun. The only difference is we as a nation now are giving it attention. I got you. Whether we give it attention or not, he's not going to change. So that's I why you. I don't even think he's doing it to get attention. I think that's just who he is. I think he's having fun with it. He's one of those guys that is just super like you know, no, nah, I could do this. You know, that's that's fun. I mean, I, I have really no problem with it, what his dad's doing. I hear you, and I like your your disposition about it. I, I want to get to you and, and and your season. I watched you a bunch of times when CP was out starting. Balling out, doing your thing. How big of an adjustment is it to go from starting, which obviously is something when you're young, you like you want that. You're oh, playing absolutely. behind so a whole thing. I'm not even hiding that, and that's yeah, I absolutely you, want. Every to do basketball that. player, yeah, every wants, player to start. wants to do that, especially um, when you're young. Absolutely, and it's 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 definitely an adjustment because at 24 years old, this that's the jump I'm, I want to make, right. and I feel like I'm going to make that very soon as becoming a starter. Mm-hmm. Um, so going and playing 20 something games, and then being like, all right, hey, you're still going to play a lot, but you got to come off the bench. Mm-hmm. It is an adjustment. It took me a couple of games to actually even get wrap my mind around just like going back to that mindset. I could see it when I'm watching. Yeah, yeah. So it just it took it took like three or four games to be like, all right, man, I, I got to get back to because it's different. When you're a starter, you can ease not ease into the game, but the first couple of minutes you get like easy bug. You get you're in the game now. 
when you come off the bench, the game is already like super competitive in motion. Mm -hmm. You got to be ready to go like right now. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to ease into the game because mm -hmm. then they'll be like, all right, bring the starters back in. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a lot harder, honestly, to um to come off the bench and, and perform well. That's why few do, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Um, and uh, that's that's the goal. That's why everybody wants to be a starter. Obviously, the kicks. Oh, he's a starting player, but like it's more along the lines. It's it's more. It's a lot kind of. I would say I don't want to say it's easier to start, but it's uh, the opportunity. I think is is more there. I got um, you. And everybody knows that, so I'm not saying anything people don't know. So I had to wrap my mind around just being ready to come off the bench, and I also had to wrap my mind around that it's bigger than me. You know what I mean? Like I'm not playing on a bad team. If I was on a, I think I could start on a lot of team, most teams in the NBA. Mm -hmm. I, I personally believe that. Mm -hmm. I'm on a playoff team mm -hmm. uh, and a veteran playoff team at that, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm playing behind a Hall of Fame mm -hmm. guy. So it's that's where you have to check yourself and be like, listen, I'm still I'm only 24. Um, I, I can still I'm getting a lot better. Let me still learn from Chris, um, and then I can make that jump soon. And then also, man, I'm playing on a playoff team. It's not about whether I want to start or not. It's about like let's do something that this franchise has never done before. Mm -hmm. So you kind of just have to put your egos aside and just focus on the team aspect. Mm -hmm. And when you do that you're able to control your inner like ego and, and just focus on that. And it's actually easier to play when you're focused on like, why am I not start? It's so hard to play because your mm -hmm. mind's clouded mm -hmm. and it's happened to me uh, plenty of times. And that's just growth as I've got, you know, you, playing on a veteran team, you don't have time. You got to grow up or they're, they'll tell you about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I'm like, all right, it's not about me and what I want. It's about, it's, a, it's about, you know, winning uh, and what's best for the team. And obviously I'm playing behind Chris Ball. He's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a veteran Hall of Fame player, so uh, it is what it is, and um, uh, you know that's that's what it is. Your your injury. We were talking earlier about the players from the past and 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 the evolution of man. You have a a, a, a hamstring injury. Yeah. When when you're when you're rehabbing, walk me through it because I love the details. Because 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 Austin, I wanted to be a professional athlete. Yeah. I'm not. I'm so far. I, from I, it. I love your I love your passion though, but, uh, no, about came, sports and basketball alone. But, thank you. Yeah. But I, I I mean I came up so short from being a professional athlete. <laughs> like it wasn't like it was like a couple of left turns or decisions. Did you play college ball? You, why are you asking me like with a straight face? Because like you, you know that I didn't D3, play college. Though. You I didn't look fucking like a, play. You I look like, like a D three player. That I like you. I like where you your know head's what at. Mean? Like you, like you average like crap. twenty a game. That's, that's this is, yeah. You look like you had that in you. Is Ashton Kutcher around? I like <laughs> see now. Like I'm, I feel I'm blushing, but but. But it's okay. So to get over your injury, the playoffs are coming. You're an yeah, essential yeah. part of the Clippers. You're yeah. the backup point guard right now with CP. And yeah. CP, you know, history is 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 told that he could get hurt. Yeah. So what do you do? Walk me through your day in terms of rehabbing. Like every single thing you do, like at home, like what do you do? Like are you ice bathing? Are you in like uh, uh, like uh, contraptions? Like, yeah, they got me doing a lot right now. Like what is it? Like what did you do today so far? Not, so today, I, you know, I can't, I come here. While they practice, I'll, uh, I have to do like cold hot tub, you know, alternate. Um, okay. And then uh, after that, I'll get like, uh, they do like just like a massage, like a light massage around the area just to ease up all the muscles around. Hey, who's the masseuse? Uh, well, it's our trainers, our trainers, yeah. But you, can I get a massage? Like, can I get like a one o'clock appointment, you think? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you, like we said, you're a D3 legend. Just say that and you'll get in right away. I, no, I, I want to get a massage. Like, I'm doing this interview here. Like, no, I'm saying, I feel like, you. I don't know. You know you can get I, mean? I know you it's like part one. of, like, your job and, like, you, you all have 24-hour massage on here. Like, I'm saying, I got a little kink in my back. Can you, can you tell the masseuse, like, I want to get a 1 p.m. 1 PM appointment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I, I can try to put you in. Okay, cool. Okay, We so have that. I have a hyperbaric chamber at 2. What is that? Uh, it's like this little tank you get in and you breathe. It pumps in, like, way more oxygen in your body than like just obviously normal um and it it just speeds up the healing process um, okay so i have to do that 12 days in a row um wow. so i'm on day five now um and it, it hurts your ears it like it takes it's like it's like being in an airplane okay but it um it, you know it speeds up and then i have uh, something called i think it's prp oh right right with uh, the, the blood, blood where they, yeah, where they, they spin they it spin it I, i've been doing blood spinning um, oh wow can I did you, that once. Can you cue me in for a 4 p.m. PRP? I don't think you want to do that. No, I, yeah. I, I need a whole... Like, it hurts. Yeah. It's I'm, I'm fine with okay. it. Been, pain is nothing to me. Okay. Oh, well then, I mean... I got to rehab things, too. It's a lot of emotional rehabilitation. Okay, okay. But, but, uh, but, all right, so then go ahead. The PRP. And that's about it. I have another PRP scheduled for tomorrow, and that's the last one. Because uh, they're trying to... You know, it's crazy. My injury is not serious. It's just bad timing. You know, I right. mean, it's, it's a hamstring. Um, you know, it's two to four weeks, right? That's right. what they're saying. It's just the, the the timing of these two to four weeks is right on the cusp of the playoffs, mm -hmm. so it's going to run into playoff games where mm -hmm. I need to be ready to play. Uh, and they're saying mid first round, 
So it's just like, you know, uh, it's just a sucky timing thing. Mm -hmm. If this happened early in the season, people wouldn't even know about it. But the fact that it's happening now, it sucks. Um, but I have to be ready to go. So I'm trying to do everything I can. You got to be tricky with him. You got to be careful because if you come back too early, you'll repull it or mm -hmm. even worse. So, you know, we're trying to get back as soon as possible. But at the same time, we have to be cautious. So it's, it's, uh, it's my first time ever pulling anything. So I'm... I'm, I'm uh, optimistic as possible yeah. well i wish you luck with that uh, now i'm gonna let you go i know we got masseuses and prps and hyperbolic stuff oh, you guys are fun i could talk to you guys all day you, uh, you, all right you well, i don't want to i don't want to get in trouble for keeping you here. i appreciate <laughs> it so i know you're 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 a, a car collector car head i love cars what's the latest car that you next, bought next. are you old school car no, no 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 i like new school i like new school cars and that's that's where the thing is because people feel like if you're a car guy you have to be all into the, the, the old models. And, right. Uh, again, I like what I, the era I grew up it's in. It's your money. I like, I like new cars, foreign cars, American made, but I like newer models. Spend the money um, how you want to spend it. Yeah, you but you have, have to be to careful of cars because all depreciating assets, unless you get a, uh, you know, obviously a rare model of a car that can actually, you know, appreciate. That's another topic for another day. But uh, that's um, the, the car. They have a Ferrari coming out next year called the 812 Superfast. Okay. It's going to be incredible. It's replacing the F12 this year. Okay. Um, and that's a car. The craziest Ferrari is so crazy because they have a, a list of guys who get the cars first. Are you on that list? No, I'm trying to get on this list, man. It's like I the mean, most can't prestigious your owner, list. Like, hook you up with a list? That's not how it works. They don't give – like, Justin Bieber tried to get on the list. And they're like, no, because you have to have bought a certain – you have to – a certain amount of cars from them. Like it's cachet. Yeah, so it's like they have these guys who have owned 24 Ferraris who are like 48 years old, 50, 60 years old. It's not that old. Don't say 48 like you're like 48 years old. Okay, yeah, that's a bad. Because I'm 47. Bad. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. you're saying it with such disdain. Like, like 60, 60, like, 60, 60, 70 years old. Yeah, those old fucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. 67 years old. The guys who've had like 30 I'm a figure, like 48. Like, you know, like you're going to turn around, you're going to blink, you're going to be 48. That beard's going to be fucking gray, Austin. No, no, no. Okay, no. and you're going to be those guys that diet. I'm, I'm going to keep like. Like Jamal Crawford died. I'm going to ask Coach K his secret. Because his hair is like completely black still. Yeah. I think that's good genes. Yeah, no, he's got that, yeah, he's got that rug hair. I yeah. think it's just, I think it's because he never opens his mouth. He's clenching his teeth. <laughs> and that's why he's, okay, so, so you're looking to get that car. I want that car. I always set cars as like things like I have to do something first to get it. Like I have to, you know, I'm not going to get that car until I achieve this on the court. It keeps like me just from going and just buying cars and cars and cars. Like, so like. Trust me, my financial advisor is, is, is always like, well, well, what's next? What are we doing? You know, right. so, but that's, that's where I have to be, you know, careful. But I'm always, every night before I go to bed, I'm online and it drives my girl crazy. But I'm always online and I'm, I'm looking at cars. I'm looking at cars. I'm looking at, I'm, I mean, it's every day. You love it. I, I do it every day. I'm, I'm talking seven days a week. How I'm, many do you own now? I only have two. I will have three by the end what of the What do you summer. got now? Like, what's your pride and joy right now? Well, I have, right now I just have like a regular, uh, the everyday cars, like a, the, the G-Wagon, you know, the little, the L.A. car, even though right. I, I don't want. The Mercedes G-Wagon? I'm not trying to be L.A. Are you, what are you, J-Lo? I'm sorry, Austin. I if mean, you, you saw mine, if you saw mine, you, up? you wouldn't think it's like, that's another thing. I don't buy, I like to really like do my own thing to them. I got I, you. I, 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 sometimes they, they're nuts, but that's just the way I, I, I am. Okay. Um, if you saw mine, you wouldn't say that. All right, it's, all right, it's pretty all right. dope. No, I got, I'm uh, sure. I'm just messing with you. Look with online, they have, if you look online and type in my name and say, put cars behind it. Well, why can't I just take the thing for a test spin while you're doing PRP? I mean, you're like, yeah. well, look online. You're sitting right in front of me. Maybe I take the thing, I bring back a couple of burgers and, and like, I don't know, an ace bandage for your hamstring. I'll give it to you. If you go to In N Out Burger, I'll give, you the, I'll give you the keys to the car. I might do that. You know what? I would take you up on that. But every time I've driven somebody's car, Austin, something has gone wrong. <laughs> and that's the only reason why I'm not taking you up on that. But, but, but I'm going to think about it. Okay. I just feel like there's going to be regrets, and you should give me some sort of, like, 24-hour contract. Like uh, You'll responsible. be able to respect this one. But, uh, uh, in about a uh, say month or two months, I'm going to get the um, – Mustang Eleanor. Okay. From you know, Gone in Sixty Seconds. Oh. Yeah, yeah. They have a couple of those. But you really, I'm gonna just say this as because I am 47. Yeah. I'm not your father. I hope you drive safe and you don't. You, I am very care. I'm not the guy that like. You're not a speed guy. I'm not the guy that. I'm saying I, this I do, to you I do it respectfully and, and, and safely. You know what I mean? I'm not the guy that's gonna like when you see like a bunch of girls on the side of the road. I'm gonna rev my engine and go real fast by. But you have proof. to drive carefully. I'm not that guy. No, 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 no. I, 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 uh, I had a Ferrari last year. Everybody was saying the same thing. Like, Austin, I don't – I had the F12 last summer, and I was driving it. I keep cars for, like, four months. 
Oh. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly, that's what I'm saying. I constantly. Oh, they like, must love you at the dealership. <laughs> when I come they must, in, they must be like, here he comes. When I come in, they're like, here he comes. They're always asking me for water and they're being very nice. And when I didn't get that before, it's, but. No, they, yeah, they know. They're yeah, like, they know now. And here then, he and then I mean business. This he wants to be on that list. Let's work up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, when I come in, the, I mean business in the deal. I don't, I don't right. come to just. Bullshit around. I I, I'm in there for. I've done my home. The thing is, I'm I'm an asshole when it comes to negotiating these cars. Are you hard with them? Absolutely. Good I know. I know car guys. I I know them. I'm friends with a couple of. I the, the, they're they will they'll suck you dry. Right. If, if you let that I, every time. It's like I, a different I, form of mathematics. It's a different. They they they. Oh, but I see it when I'm in there. No, I know. Especially here in Beverly Hills. Yo, like, forget about. I it. come here and I'll be in, in there LA? talking. This oh, is the best of the best. I'll see foreign money. People come in there and they'll they'll they'll. they'll they just they 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 fucking rape these dudes. Yeah, you got to bring like, it to them. Oh, you gotta every tell time. Them, this is what I'm looking to pay. You have to be prepared to walk away. Uh, yeah, I, you know what? You say you go to the Ferrari dealer. You know what? I'm going to the Benz dealer now. And you know what I did when I did? You should do this. The only thing about that is they do so well that if you did it, like, all right, best of luck. Nah, you know what you do, For Dawson. This is, listen, I don't buy cars at your level, but I tell you this. I was getting a BMW. The guy was breaking like my BMW's balls. It's a nice car. It's a nice car. I, I was, but the guy was breaking my balls. So you know what I did? I real time FaceTimed him from the Range Rover place. I'm at Range Rover right now, asshole. Okay. <laughs> you, you, I'm either gonna I'm either gonna end this phone call and come back to you, or I'm gonna buy this car. That's what you start doing. You start saying it's not a bad method. FaceTime use our technology in yeah. this era. That was, well, my era. <laughs> you know, you, huh. could, you can. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, I got you. But that's what you start doing. Be like, really? Okay, because I'm at the bench. I want to make this clear, though. I, I don't, and I gave I him don't... two courtside seats. Oh, so, well, then that'll seal the deal. Yeah, no, I you let them know. It. it doesn't have to be an extremely expensive car. I got I you. I love Ferrari's my favorite brand. I, I, listen, like, you're. But, but I like, like, I was looking online the other day at a Chevelle SS okay. for like 15000 Okay. Um, that I wanted to buy and, you know, restore and, oh. and everything like that. So. It's top to bottom. I got but, you. Uh, for, obviously, Ferrari's just like top dog, and that's just like uh, in the in the car world, they'd be lying if people didn't say that's the best exotic. That's is from top to bottom. Their cars are are, are um, it's not even close, really. Who 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 in the NBA is known for like about that car life? Like who's got um, the collection? Like there's they, some surprising ones. Like who? Um, uh, PJ Tucker, I heard, is a uh, okay. is, a, is a guy who always has some cool cars okay. and does well as cars. Uh, as far as guys who like are knowledgeable about like you know a lot of cars, um, I know LeBron has a lot of cars, okay. and, and you know obviously that guy you know those you guys bring can, the mood down with that. We're bringing up him, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, he can. No, he no, can, no, no, he no. can buy. I mean, those guys. Yeah, he yeah. could buy any and, car. Yeah, yeah, He's he, on the list. I don't. I don't want to make you feel like less. He than, is on the list. He's on the list. <laughs> I looked on the list, and his name is yeah, on that he's list. He's on list of car. He's on a list that he doesn't even yeah, buy the car. He doesn't car. even know. He's they on just the put list. him on the list. He doesn't know he's on the right. list. Okay. Um, there's there's a there's a there's a lot. See there's a there's but a those thing. little cars like the Ferraris and all that. I mean you're six four. You're, 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 you're a true six DJ four. DJ fit in the Ferrari that I had last year. I'm I sure don't he know could how. Fit in it, but I does he actually how. want to go anywhere in that? I mean you're you're yeah. you're you're bigger than me. Now I take up a lot of space in a car. Yeah. I have the flailing you have arms. Get, you have to get the racer seats because they're like this much lower. Okay. So your head's not touching the ceiling of the car. You actually can fit in safely. Like you're comfortable in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, there's a different. There's a lot of guys in sports in general uh -huh. by like, it, and this is the thing, like people will see me and be like, oh, it's just an athlete in a nice car, like, because guys will just buy a nice car because they feel like it's cool and right. they want to get girl, you know, all that. that right, right, I get right. it, you know. Right. I get, but it's like I wish I had a sign on my car. It's like, no, 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 no. I actually genuinely, I know everything about this car. Right. I actually like cars, so I, I, you know, I drive. If I drive a Rolls Royce, I'm not doing it to look cool. I actually like, I respect the time they put into I making you. one of these vehicles. Like, I got you. You know, I, I, I watch how they're made. I watch, I, I would go on YouTube and watch, you know, them fucking sew the upholstery. I, I, I look you. at all those things. So it's like, I get it. But can, that's, can I come with you the next time you go deal with these car deals? Cause I like to, I like to chew them up and fucking spit them out. You, you go in there, you bring the credit card. I'm not spending a nickel and I'll do it. I'll do a pro bono for you. We go in there the next time you want one of these cars, they want to break your balls. They got to deal with me. You don't we have to call your financial that. advisor. You have that. them deal with me. Because these, these fucking cocksuckers, they should be lucky. <laughs> they should be lucky somebody cares so much about it. A young, <laughs> grizzled vet veteran of five years. Young grizz Why does he keep calling me a young, grizzled vet? Young, grizzled veteran of five years. All right, I'm going to let you go. This is the first time I've been called a vet, so I, I appreciate five that. Five years, man. Do you know this team? I Paul Pierce, 18 years. Jamal Crawford, 17 years. DJ's like 10. 
Blake's 10, Chris is like 13, uh, JJ's 9, Brandon Bass 9, Mo Spates 9, uh, uh, Wesley Johnson, uh, is, I think, is going on his 8. You're an NBA veteran, man, and it's beautiful. On this team, I'm the I'm, youngest player that plays. Are you the youngest player? No, no, no. Besides, you know the rookies are only two years younger than me. I know, like, Gonzaga has probably, like, you, you, you know, like. The, 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 the big one, the big guy with the beard Karmowski? is definitely, like, 27 years old. Oh, yeah. No, he's uh, he's maybe at, at, at least twenty seven. Yeah, for sure. At least twenty seven. For sure. All right, I'm gonna let you go. Okay. I, I really appreciate this. Oh no, this is fun. I appreciate you, it. Man. You you you're doing your thing this year. I appreciate. I that. want you back from injury. Appreciate that. I want so you. I. I want you. You masseused, hyper chambered, bollock chambered, PRP blood spin, and ready to go for the playoffs. Absolutely. Be aggressive and do your thing. Thank you. I appreciate All it, man. Right, man. Thanks for chatting up with you guys, man. You guys are cool, man. Appreciate and by the by the way, by the Thank way. You. The, the 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 first time I talked to you, you were you were talking uh, about ping pong. Yet you walked by the ping pong to table today, and you walked by it real quick. I'm just letting you know. Like I, I saw you play last time, and it's nothing for you to be oh, talking man. on the air about. Man, put it that way. Talk I, to your yeah. assistant coach Sam Casella and ask him. Ask him. I had him sweating like he was. He had a flashback like he was in Game Seven of the playoffs. <laughs> trust me, he beat me, but I, trust me, he wasn't. It wasn't an easy task you, for him. I, I'll say this. I have not beat Sam yet. So if you're He's close, good. Sam is really good. You know who else is the sleeper of your Blake, whole? Blake's pretty good. I haven't played him. He doesn't want the Lawrence Frank. He could play. He yeah. surprised me. He's a quick, he, you know, he's, he is who exactly what you think he is. How He, he plays a feisty little. And he's competitive. Exa- exact, oh, my gosh. He's Lawrence nuts. Is, Lawrence is nuts. I love Lawrence. I but, love but Lawrence Frank. Lawrence Frank is exactly who you would think he'd be in ping pong. That's like how he coaches is how he plays. Tenacity. We're, 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 we're letting him go. He he keeps saying, "Can I can I do this all day and all this?" I got, you gotta go, man. I've had enough. All right, all I'm right. gonna let you go, man. Appreciate it, man. Thanks right. again, man. Thank you guys. Yeah, you guys this are cool, so man. Yeah, for sure. For sure.